This is the one and only Ivan, chapters 36 through 41. Chapter 36, Tricks. Even after Julia and her father leave, I try to keep sulking, but it's no use. Gorillas are not, by nature, powders. Stella, I call, it's a full moon. Did you see? Sometimes, when we are lucky, we catch a glimpse of the moon through the skylight in the food court. I did, Stella says. She is whispering, and I realize that Ruby must be asleep. Is Ruby all right, I ask? She's too thin, Ivan, Stella says. Poor baby. She was in that truck for days. Mac bought her from a circus, the same way he bought me. But she hadn't been there long. She was born in the wild, like us. Will she be okay, I ask? Stella doesn't answer my question. The circus trainers chained her to the floor, Ivan, all four feet, 23 hours a day. I puzzle over why this would be a good idea. I always try to give humans the benefit of the doubt. Why would they do that, I finally ask. To break her spirit, Stella says, so she could learn to balance on a pedestal, so she could stand on her hind legs, so a dog could jump on her back while she walked in mindless circles. I hear her tired voice and think of all the tricks Stella has learned. Chapter 37, Introductions. When I awake the next morning, I see a little trunk poking out between the bars of Stella's domain. Hello, says a small voice. I'm Ruby, she waves her trunk. Hello, I say, I'm Ivan. Are you a monkey, she asks. Certainly not, I respond. Bob's ears perk up, although his eyes stay closed. He's a gorilla, he says, and I am a dog of uncertain heritage. Why did the dog climb your tummy? Ruby asks. Because it's there, Bob murmurs. Is Stella awake, I ask? Aunt Stella's asleep, Ruby says. Her foot is hurting, I think. Ruby turns her head. Her eyes are just like Stella's, black and long-lashed, bottomless lakes fringed by tall grass. When is breakfast, she asks. Soon, I say, when the mall opens and the workers come. Where... Ruby twists her head in the other direction. Where are the other elephants? It's just you and Stella, I say. And for some reason, I feel we have let her down. Are there more of you? Not at the moment, I say. Ruby picks up a piece of hay and considers it. Do you have a mom and a dad? Well, I used to. Everyone has parents, Bob explains. It's unavoidable. Before the circus, I used to live with my mom and my aunts and my sisters and my cousins, Ruby says. She drops the hay, picks it up, and twirls it. They're dead now. I don't know what to say. I am not really enjoying this conversation, but I can see that Ruby isn't done talking. To be polite, I say, I'm sorry to hear that, Ruby. Humans killed them, she says. Who else? Bob asks, and we fall silently asleep. Chapter 38, Stella and Ruby. All morning, Stella strokes Ruby, pats her, smells her. They flap ears. They rumble and roar. They sway as if they're dancing. Ruby clings to Stella's tail. She slips under Stella's belly. Sometimes they just lean into each other. Their trunks twirl together like jungle vines. Stella looks so happy. It's more fun to watch than any nature show I've ever seen on TV. Chapter 39, Home of the One and Only Ivan. George and Mac are out by the highway. I can see them through one of my windows. They are next to each other on tall wooden ladders, leaning against the billboard that tells the cars to stop and visit the one and only Ivan, Mighty Silverback. George has a bucket and a long-handled broom. Mac has pieces of paper. He slaps one against the billboard. George dips the broom into the bucket. He wets the paper with the liquid from the bucket, and somehow the paper stays in place. They put up many pieces before they are done. When they climb down from the ladders, I see that they've added a picture of a little elephant to the billboard. The elephant has a lopsided smile. She is wearing a red hat, and her tail curls like a pig's. She doesn't look like Ruby. 
She doesn't even look like an elephant, actually. I've known Ruby only for one day, and I could have drawn her better than that. Chapter 40, Art Lesson. Ruby asks a lot of questions. She says, Ivan, why is your tummy so big? And have you ever seen a green giraffe? And can you get me one of those pink clouds that the humans are eating? When Ruby asks, what is that on your wall? I explain that it's a jungle. She says the flowers have no scent and that the waterfall has no water and the trees have no roots. I am aware of that, I say. It's art. It's a picture made with paint. Do you know how to make art? Ruby asks. Yes, I do, I say, and I puff up my chest just a little. I've always been an artist. I love drawing. Why do you love it? Ruby asks. I pause. Hmm. I've never talked to anyone about this before. Well, when I'm drawing a picture, I feel, I feel quiet inside. Ruby frowns. Quiet is boring. Not always, I say. Ruby scratches the back of her neck with her trunk. What do you draw anyway? Well, bananas mostly. Things in my domain. My drawings sell at the gift shop for $25 a piece with a frame. What's a frame? Ruby asks. What's a dollar? What's a gift store? I close my eyes. I'm a little sleepy, Ruby. Have you ever driven a truck? Ruby asks. I don't answer. Ivan? Ruby asks. Ivan? Can Bob fly? A memory flashes past, surprising me. I think of my father snoring peacefully under the sun while I try every trick I know to wake him. Perhaps I realize he wasn't really such a sound sleeper after all. Chapter 41, Treat. How's that foot, old girl? George asks Stella. Stella pokes her trunk between the bars. She inspects George's right pocket shirt for the treat he brings her every night without fail. George doesn't always bring me treats. Stella's his favorite. But I don't mind because she's my favorite too. Stella sees that George's pocket is empty. She gives George a frustrated nudge with her trunk, and Julia giggles. Stella moves to George's left pocket and discovers a carrot. Nimbly, she removes it. Mac walks past. Toilets plugged up in the men's bathroom, he says. Big mess. I'll take care of it, George sighs. Mac turns to leave. Um, before you go, Mac, George says, you might want to take a look at Stella's foot. I think it's infected again. Ah, oh, darn thing never does heal up right. Mag rub, Mac rubs his eyes. I'll keep an eye on it. Money's tight though, you know. Can't be calling the vet every time she sneezes. George strokes Stella's trunk. She inspects his pockets one more time, just in case. Sorry, girl, George says, as he watches Mac walk away.